Well, we'll try that again. Happy Tuesday. Happy garbage day. Sorry if there was a little on and off there. Uh, all that had happened was that uh, for some reason my phone thought it was sideways, so I thought if you watch it, I'll be sideways on you. So that's why I wanted to correct it real quick. But it's good to have you join me this morning for devotional time. The devotions for today are an encouragement. I always say, you know, because I do celebrate Garbage Day, which if you've been following me, you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't been, you then I'm some crazy psychotic person that likes garbage. But the idea is that uh, we remember just how we've been forgiven by God, how he takes away all of our sins and cleanses our past and cleans out our lives regularly each week. He does it on Sundays or Saturdays when we come to worship as we hear those words of absolution spoken. But he also does that in our lives each day as we remember the sacrifice that Christ has made for us. And so uh, I remember our garbage day because on this one says, we cycle through Jesus. He takes away our sins. Now today I want to use the uh, gospel that we had this previous Sunday. If we have been forgiven, we want to forgive others. Uh, it's one that God tells us, forgive as you've been forgiven. But today it's going to be love as you have been loved. And so we're going to use the, the gospel lesson from John 15 verses 9 to 17. And then from that, uh, a little devotion about how we are encouraged to love, the, the basis for that love. It's one thing to say, go love others, but then love can be somewhat subjective in some people's minds. And even though the Lord says to love others, well, sometimes I've met many people, even Christians, uh, even Christian professional church workers who, when they are told to go love others, well, yeah, but, and there's always a but in there. Uh, we're gonna be reminded today that when it comes to that command to love, there is no but involved. It's to love all. And so the devotion today comes from John 15, 9 to 17. And actually, this is uh, based on a devotion that we have from uh, Lutheran Hour Ministries. If you haven't followed Lutheran Hour Ministries, they are on our website. They have wonderful daily devotions. And this is from a devotion that they had about a week ago. And it begins, Jesus said, as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I've spoken to you that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends, if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends. For all that I have heard from my Father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you so that you will love one another. Here ends the text. Now here Jesus talks a lot, a lot about love. And he talks a lot about love throughout these whole chapters. We heard even John uh, the Apostle writes about love for, for five chapters in 1 John. Now have you ever been urged or instructed kind of in a spirited or even a guilt-filled way to love someone? Maybe it was your mom, thinking about Mother's Day this last week, telling you to get along with your annoying brother or sister. Maybe it was your spouse telling you to Look to your better side to be more patient with your exasperating teenage son or teenage daughter. Is love a thing that we can just, you know, turn on when requested? Be more loving. And you say, yes, I can do that. It seems more often we need to reason to love people in such circumstances. And for it to be any kind of motivating factor, the reason needs to be pretty compelling. Look at how Jesus talks about love. He says, as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. As the Father has loved me, that's where Jesus starts. Not with his view of what he thinks about somebody else, but as he has been loved, and by extension, how we have been loved too. It has nothing to do with our feelings or if the other person merits our love or not. It's about how God already loved us in Jesus, how God already acted in love for us in Jesus. Now, with this in mind, it looks like our grudges might be the first thing that need to go out the window. If someone doesn't agree with us, has a different opinion than us, if someone has different feelings, or if they just keep saying things that we don't feel comfortable about, then our normal action is to build up a wall, to be resentful, to be angry, to think, I'm not going to love that person. Now, when we think about that, this love one another stuff can be kind of hard, especially when we feel like 
we own the high ground. And in our world today, a lot of people feel like they own the high ground. Uh, and the flag that is stuck in the high ground that we set says, I won't budge. If that's the case, then we really need to rethink how close we are to following our Savior's instructions to love. Now, without a doubt, trying to muster up love for someone else who's hurt us can be a futile exercise because we'll keep remembering that pain. We'll keep harboring that ill will. We'll, we'll, we'll carry with us what they've done and we'll keep thinking to ourselves, no, I'm, I'm not going to love them because they hurt me or they'll just do it again. This is where we need to be reminded again and again how Jesus takes out the trash in our lives. We need to be reminded how, how God first loved us in Jesus. And so what we need to do is we need to turn it over to Jesus. You see, he's the victor who's proven his love at the greatest price possible. This Jesus is the one who endured mistreatment from a peasant and priest alike. Remember the crowds shouted, crucify him, crucify him. The priest railed against him. This is the one who bore the suffocating weight of our sins and died for them, with, died for our sins on his back. And then three days later, he rose from the dead in complete victory. That's how he took care of our sins. And that's how he takes care of us eternally. And so therefore, that is all done through love. The love that God has for Jesus, the love that Jesus has for us. And then, as extension, the love that we have for others. When we're finding it hard to, to show that love, to be loving to someone, Maybe we disagree with them. Maybe we feel like we have the high ground. Maybe we have grudges or pains that we continue to harbor. Maybe we are dealing with uh, frustrating teenagers or spouses or coworkers. Um, it's the time to think back on Jesus, the one who truly showed the Father's love for us and allow that to be our motivation, our, our impetus on how we are to love others in the same way. And so the prayer that I would have for you today is that Jesus would be your encouragement, would be your power, would be your focus of how you are to carry out his commands of loving one another just as he has loved us, realizing that he loves us just as the Father loves him. And so loving one another means that we look beyond all the differences, we look beyond all the hurts, we look beyond all the pains. We don't love someone because they merit it or because they're someone that we are close to or like or desire. It's those who we are called to love are the ones who are the ones that hurt us the most, the ones that have the most friction with us. Because remember, Jesus died for those who were sinners, those who were God's enemies. Remember when he hung on the cross? He had two thieves next to him. One railed against him, the other one just said, you know, Jesus, remember when you come to your kingdom. And it's that day that he spoke those words of absolution to that thief on the cross. Today you will be with me in paradise. That same absolution that we hear each week in worship, that same absolution we're reminded of each day by God's tremendous love for us in Jesus Christ, how he takes the garbage out of our lives. And so be garbage men. I say that a lot, but do that in the way that you love others, in the way that you care for others, in the way that you will follow Christ's command by reflecting and showing that you too are a garbage collector. You too are a lover of souls. You too are are a disciple of Jesus Christ. Well, let's bow our heads for a quick prayer and uh, then we'll uh, go off on our wonderful day because it is gorgeous. It's beautiful outside. Go enjoy this gorgeous day and whoever you come into contact with, share the love of Christ with them. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask that you would help us to love others as you have loved us in Jesus. Help us to overlook differences, pains, frustrations, complaints, and to see every person with your eyes, eyes of mercy, eyes of grace, eyes of love, eyes that see the cross and know the tremendous sacrifice that your son gave for us in love. Inspire us daily, Lord, with that love in our lives to see and to share that with others. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, hey, have a very wonderful day. And I just saw Paul popped on. Paul, it was great seeing a photo of you on Facebook uh, in just out inside of your front door with a walker there. You are doing stupendous. Uh, great to, to see how your recovery is going. And to all of you at home, continue to love others and just reflect the love and glory of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Have a wonderful day. Aloha. Know that I love you.